live? I think we are live. Yes, we're live. Hello. <laughs> All right. Um, let me just share it on Twitter for a second. Yep. Da, 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 da. Cool. I think that's that. Gonna share this. Um, yes, like that, like that, like that. Okay, it's him. Hello, Cromfell. <laughs> He's here. He's here. Hello. Levan, I uh, hope you guys are doing great. Long time no see. Um, is the tweet out? I think it is. Wait a second. Is it out? I think it is out. Yes. Cool. Did tweet it. That's out. Hello, Chris. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Dalabot. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Well, maybe looking a bit like him, probably. No, it's definitely not. Hmm. Could you buy us doing games now? <laughs> You're not blonde enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's really true. Okay. Hello, Rocking Manda. Oh, it's Cheers. Hello, how are you doing? That's cool. Stream. Yes. So, Cromfelt's message on Discord. <laughs> <laughs> so, how is everyone doing? I hope you're all um, healthy and feeling well and you're not coughing and you washed your hands, hopefully. <laughs> Before the stream, yeah, avoiding avoiding the uh, the stuff going around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who is this, by the way? I'm new to the stream. Who is this, by the way? It's David. I'm David. Uh, David. Yes, I'm David, and Steve is here too. Yep, that's me. Sadly, you can't see Steve. Just in in sound. <laughs> Just One sound. day when the budget rises, we'll go uh, oh, yeah. dual cameras. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. We'll do that. Um, yes. Hey, Mini, I, I know you. You should rename your channel to German PewDiePie to get more views. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should probably do that. Might work, but we might also piss people off, <laughs> including we'll PewDiePie. Probably we'll do that. Oh, I gotta share the stream on, on Instagram really quick. Wait a second, guys. One second. Mm. Um, Instagram. Instagram, Instagram, Instagram. Can we add? Oh, yeah. Okay, Instagram. The YouTube channel, stream. We need to copy the link onto our Instagram description. Abysmus has have been out for four days, so I'm fine. <laughs> Living the life, man. Oh yes. Uh, in our life now. Here. Cool. Okay, that's gonna delete my description, and now I'm just gonna make a story really quick. Hello, Alex. Uh, let's just change it. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, so Not just <laughs> for people that come in here, just add some. Um, I just add some blender background so people don't go away because they see my face. Uh, so it looks like <laughs> a it looks like a proper stream, and people don't think I'm just 
doing entertaining random shit here. Okay, okay, okay. Wait a sec, guys. I'm just sharing the stream on Instagram really quickly. Mm. Right. Dun, dun, dun. Cool. We are live, not love. We are live now. Link in bio. That's how it works. Bam. Pretty simple. Okay. Hello, 12 people. That's a lot. It's more than last time. Yep. That's cool. Okay, so today, what we're going to do is. Um, so, what you see here is just some. Uh, I was just fixing our foliage, our grass for the game. So, everyone that's new here, I don't know who's here. Um, probably only people from Discord, I'm guessing. But nevertheless, uh, we are developing a first person shooter called Industria. And um, today, we're gonna, just going to um, show you some. Well, some live streaming from the game, from its development. Uh, today, especially, I want to build some big buildings, big structures for the game. Um, if you don't know the game yet, you can check our Steam page. I'm just dropping that in the chat really quickly. So for anyone new, you can check it out here. Um, this is our Steam page. You can wishlist uh, and follow the game over there. That would help us a lot if you haven't already, but I guess most of you have uh, have anyway already. So excuse me for annoying you. Um, yeah, so today we're just uh, building some big buildings. Um, let me open my Blender file for that. Uh, so Steve might Oh, I am German, Dalabat. <laughs> but Steve is not. <laughs> we're half German, we're half British. So. Exactly. That's exactly how it is. <laughs> um, so, um, Steve might cut out. I'm just showing really quickly what we do in Unreal here. So, that's a building in Unreal. Just turn this the game down. You here still, Steve? Yep. Yep. Sounds good, actually. Okay. I'll go out of Unreal in a second. Um, I'm just showing really quickly how the game looks, um, what we're doing right now here. Um, yep. Oh, let me just kill Steam really quickly for the sake of my RAM. Also, Skype. Where's Skype? Let me sk kill Skype really quick. Bam. Cool. All right. Okay, that's the game. You're still here, Steve? Yep. It's kind of a little bit. But... Okay. Uh, I'll get out of here really quick. But um, so that's. Um, the buildings we have in the game right now, I just edited them a few days ago. And um, there's no sound now, I'm just playing mute. Um, and um, yeah, that's the weapons we updated um, a few days as ago as well. Like the guns all look a bit more modern now. Um, yeah, and the buildings are actually a big thing for us because we always they were always really simple looking like the one down here. And the building down here is just, you know, it just looks really boring. You know, it's just a flat tiling texture. It's just edges, really hard edges. It's just really boring. So yeah, we're going for this style now, which looks way nicer. And um, 
This is one of the finished ones, and now today I'm just going to build another one of those. Um, yeah, so that's what we're going to do. Now I'm switching from Unreal Engine 4 back to Blender. All right, hey. Steve, should be here again. I can hear you again. <laughs> oh, wow, okay, crazy. Yeah, yeah for some reason, a stream Unreal Engine always kills Discord because we're talking, I'm talking over Discord with Steam, uh, with Steve, <laughs> Steam. Um, and then he just gets cut out. Oh, what kind of game? Abysma? You doing a similar game? What kind of game are you doing, man? <laughs> We've really done our ammo system. Uh, I think for the third time now. Yes. We made it in the first place, then we changed it a bit, and then we went back. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Oh, so I decided to put not put don't put any music on in the background, so you can listen to your own stuff. Uh, I guess that that's better. A doom like shooter, nice. Ooh, doom like shooter. That sounds good. We were um recently trying to think of some competitors and uh, <laughs> really struggled but doom was one of the ones that cropped up even though it's kind of yeah. really different to play than industrial yeah totally that's really true uh... cyber shock cyber shock nice are you on steam Like that. Yeah, just want to ask that. Are you on Steam or Twitch or have some socials? Right now, I'm just searching for some reference images, by the way. For the building here. Um, ah, so we're prototyping still. Oh, okay, right. I just gotta find the right image here. Is that right? Where is my reference image? Where is it? So I was in Prague a few years ago with my girlfriend and I was taking a lot of photographs of beautiful buildings there. And that's what I'm using for reference images now. Um, you can see it right here. Um, these kind of buildings are actually a big inspiration for the buildings in our city now because Prague is just full of these beautiful old just like the plaster on these like the yeah the plaster like the colors and all like they, they look so run down but it's just beautiful colors going on there um, I'm just searching for the right one so give me a second Can I share the server? Yeah, please do. Might actually um, oh, blocked. is it blocked? I don't, know. Right. I don't think you can post links in, in chats. Ah. But you can just tell the name and people could search by it or something. Where is that image? I'm sorry, I didn't find it. What are you most proud of so far in Industria? 
Hmm. Um, <laughs> that it's still afloat. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'd say, um, hey, Dabble School, uh, I'd say it'd probably be something technical like, um, the whole, um, level loading system and saving system and all that kind of oh, stuff, both, yeah. or even the weapon system, or I don't know, yeah, well, even the laws, quite cool. The what? The law, the whole, um, yeah. Story and stuff. Yeah. Mm. It's a difficult question because. Uh... Yeah. There's a lot that we've kind of learned and kind of uh, uh, been proud of, I suppose. Yeah. Totally. That's right. Yeah, it's just uh, it's a bit overwhelming, all the stuff in the game, so it's really hard to really pinpoint it down right um yeah what what the exact thing is i can't find this image i'm stupid oh i find it cool beautiful all right Cool. So yeah, that's the uh, the reference images I'm gonna reference image I'm gonna work with today for the building. So as you can see, I just put this like half screen here. I already tried to. Do, this was just a really rough block out, so Steve could actually put it in the level and kind of step the shapes and the size of the level. So basically all this, the windows are just completely stupid um, geometry wise, they just are put there. So um, Steve can use it really quick. So I got to change this all, like the geometry here is also really stupid, this um, arch. And uh, because we have all these cuts here going through the roof, it's really stupid. So what I'm going to do is basically, I just draw that here, have this bottom part separated because it needs to have a high, level, high resolution texture anyway and then basically have that separated completely so all the geometry that's going to be here because of that arch and because of this inset stops here and then we have a fresh plane basically where we can like then add all the, all the other geometry for the windows because that will be complicated enough because the windows should go inside, right? So this needs to be one mesh, sadly. And then we have the bottom, like the top part here with some roof piece. Yeah, I'll see. Probably something like that. So yeah, um, I just put this to my second screen. Dalaba is asking if you can delete some of those loops. Uh, which loops? The edge loops on that mesh. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, which I think is what Dave was just talking about. Um, yes. It's basically just uh, the base mesh that we uh, wanted to use to place around the, the level. Yes, exactly. So what I'm going to do is now basically clean this up and make a proper mesh out of it. Like these windows. Ooh, I literally just place all these, so I just literally delete them. Um, and basically now, um, completely rip this upper part off. So from here on, there should be no, it should be not connected anymore. So I just rip this off, separate the objects, and then we can just like have a lot of polygons doing some nice art here. But then the upper mesh is doesn't has all these stupid loop cuts, um, so we can have some clean geometry there for the windows. So I just go dissolve edges here and just, just do this. Um, Alex asks, what were the inspirations for the game? Oh, mostly. Uh, I mean, I think uh, she probably knows this, but mostly uh, Half Life Two. And Portal 2. Oh, 
Um, <laughs> which uh, quite a lot of people tend to link the game to, so it's kind of nice. Yeah, totally. That's totally right. Yeah, Half-Life Portal, all the Souls games, right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I agree. There is there definitely have to rise the European building feel and also the office space from the beginning. Yeah, the European building stuff is probably um one of the main things that really makes it feel half life because there's not a lot of games that take this European design aspect into buildings. I didn't see a lot. It's either completely fantasy stuff or it's like more like skyscrapers, US stuff. But it's really rarely it's actually um it's actually um European architecture. Yeah. The second alpha <laughs> Yeah, well I think we're glad you didn't play it, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. It was okay. It was okay. But, <laughs> but uh, it missed the mark. The second one, you mean? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the second alpha was not. But it, I, but it was still useful in, its, it was in different ways. It was reusable. We still yeah. got lots of answers from it, which is the main thing. So. Yeah, totally. Loads of answers. That's true. Different answers to the first one as well, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, right. Yeah. That's right. That's really true. <laughs> yeah, Cromfell. <laughs> yeah, Cromfell did a lot of terrible things with our office. <laughs> but <laughs> he showed some, some, some uh, real love there. That's for sure. I mean, he was just tidying up, you know. Yeah, he was just tidying up. So Cromfell was quite helpful. Was, yeah, it was helpful. Cromfell was literally um, grabbing every single physical box there was, and uh, well, stacked it up everywhere and just completely wrecked the whole place. Oh, that's really nice, man. Thanks, Dada. Yeah, the office. That's where it all started. <laughs> I'm a box man. Yeah, he is. Nice. Hi, I'm a box man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll keep the boxes, don't worry. We might even, uh, I mean, we could like, <laughs> we could have an Easter egg that uh, only Cromfell knows the answer to. Yes. Um, like a <laughs> maybe a key code or something in the office yeah. and the room would just be full of boxes if you full get them Dude, we need a secret room for him <laughs> yeah oh we'll do this for sure man we'll do this for sure this is wonderful we really need this Cromfell really needs it i think he has a there's a great need for him for this We need some more Easter eggs, actually. I think we need a lot more Easter eggs. Yeah, it'd be really good to just do a big pass of um, Easter eggs and yeah, and uh, general references and stuff. I agree. Because uh, that'd be great. <laughs> yes, 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 I agree. So, um, who bought an VR set yet? Yeah people because we didn't <laughs> but half of Alex is going yeah. to be released in a week so that's crazy 
I still can't believe it, man. Um, <laughs> it's just like it's so frustrating. But yeah, it's frustrating as fuck, actually. It's um, I mean, we're the definition of uh, <laughs> Half Life's target audience, and uh, we won't be playing it. <laughs> exactly. It's just that sucks. It's stupid. It's really stupid. But. One day. One day in the future. I mean, yeah. When you <clears> you can play it on the cheap, though, can't you? I mean, you could get like a. Is it the Oculus Quest? Is that the cheap one? I can't remember. I don't know. Actually, I don't have a clue. But yeah, there is there's ways to do it, I'm sure. Like, also quite cheap. Yeah. But no point, really, is so there? No. I've got to go for the index or go home. <laughs> yes. Ah, oh, Abysma can play it. We can't. Um. Yeah, I know it's crazy. It's just, I'm really surprised that they're not doing a desktop version. Maybe they will, but some people think they will eventually. But I don't know. Some think. I don't really think that. I think this won't happen. It. I yeah, I mean, it, it goes against the whole idea of them pushing the art, doesn't it? Exactly. Yeah. It just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Uh, it's the same with the Steam stuff they did back then, right? There was no yep. no Half-Life version without Steam, was there? Yeah, yeah. They just did Steam exclusively and people were like going mad. And then yep. a few years later, everyone was like, Steam is the best thing ever. <laughs> um... So that's crazy. Yeah, I mean, people hated Steam, like you say at the beginning, people hated Steam, but people don't, I, I wouldn't say people hate VR as much because it's optional at the moment, isn't it? Not for Half-Life Alex, but like yeah. generally it's yeah. optional. Yeah, totally. Back then it was just complete. Yeah. Yeah, there is really cheap ones, right? There's definitely cheap ones, but yep. the thing is... I'm not into VR that much, really. I tried it a few times, yeah. and I wasn't really enjoying it that much. It was really intense, and I guess if you get used to it, you'll love it at some point. It's 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 this perfect definition of a situation of there's something new and you don't really want it, and but at some point everything is going to be like that. <laughs> so. I think VR or some kind of form between VR and PC. I don't know. Some different kind of screens maybe or yeah. some weird shit is going to happen at some point because I wonder if you could play uh, Half-Life Alex on Google Cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> Google oh this thing. This... You remember the the thing where you put your your smartphone yeah, yeah, in? Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'd recommend it. But... Poor phone, it will probably burn through. <laughs> uh, yeah, they clearly say that a lot of times in the interviews that um, it's definitely not designed for desktop. Like from ground up, it's designed for for VR. So. There's no way to actually make it play it make make it playable on PC. That's what I've heard. So, yeah. Um, don't know. It's like I don't think it will happen. Maybe not. But a more interesting question, who of you is actually using Blender? I think I think Chromefall actually changed um, some time ago, didn't you? Because the light sense ran out of uh, Cinema 4D, right? Um, I just switched to Blender 2.8 recently and it's such a game changer, really. But it's still slow. 
What's your favorite level at the moment to work on? Oh. Um, that's a good question. We have a level that's basically like you start it pretty much in the slap bang in the middle of the game called the canal and that I'd say for me and I think probably Dave that's our favorite level. Yeah, the canal you mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're working on um the level just before that at the moment. Yeah. Called streets and um that's like complete opposite end of the spectrum. It's probably the least <laughs> uh likable level from a from our standpoint. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Um, it will get better soon. <laughs> it will get really better. Were you using Cinema 4D for modeling? No. No, 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 no. Not me. <laughs> oh, Cromfell. Yeah, I think Cromfell is. Is still? Yeah. yeah. I think so. Still here in, yeah, C4D. But playing with Blender. It's crazy, man. Definitely really crazy. So let me I think I'll just leave it at this point for this bottom part. Oh yeah, we need some shutter door. So this shutter door I think it was should be closed down completely. That. Modeling in C4D is okay. Not in a technical way, but it has some user tools. Mostly it's just missing a lot of features, so that's why Blender Go being open is so cool. Yeah. So I start with Cinema 4D in school now, like a few weeks ago. And my teacher is using Cinema 4D professionally for, for a few years now. And he's like working in some company and they're doing like some professional render stuff with it. And yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, it's a real pain in the ass, but well, he, this guy is like, you know, he's, um, he's, he doesn't know a lot about current trends, I guess. So. He showed us when he, in the first hour, he was like showing in the first um, module, he was showing us uh, like other modeling software, other 3D software, of course, Blender as well. And Blender, he showed like Blender 2.4, which is literally like 10 years old. <laughs> and he was like saying, oh, there's other software, there's Blender, it's free, it's okay. And he showed like a screenshot from from 10 years ago or something <laughs> and Love I was it. like saying well stop 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 this is not don't confuse my class colleagues <laughs> this is not what's what it is like anymore so um, you called him out sorry you called him out I told him that this is not this is not um, <laughs> this is I bet not, he hates you <laughs> yeah he hates me I, I think uh. But not, not really, because he just didn't know, right? And then on every yeah. feature, he's like, he's asking like, uh, like he's, he's looking at me in every thing he shows, like, can you do this in Blender? Like, um, <laughs> like seriously asking, it's like basic stuff. And I said, yes, yeah. of course. <laughs> it's like, yeah. you can probably do it better in Blender <laughs> in some instances, right? Yeah, it's yeah. crazy, isn't it? All these, um these techie people that are teaching in colleges and unis and stuff. And they like, if they literally just teach for the rest of their lives, they just get left behind. Yeah, totally. It's just crazy. Absolutely. 
So yeah, that was is always a bit annoying in school now. Um, I hope at some point. I don't know. I wasn't really thinking about really going to the uh, school principals and just saying, "Hey, I think we need to update the the classes <laughs> and just teach Blender to the people." I don't know. For me, it makes so much more sense because yeah. it reached a point where it's as good as like yeah commercial stuff. And why would you? Like, of course, it doesn't cost you anything when you're in uni. Um, it's free education license, but as soon as you get out, you got to pay. And why paying for something that you can do in another software as well? That's what I don't really understand, especially if you're teaching young people that maybe don't have that much money. And if you're a freelancer, you got to pay for stuff all the time, right? Mm -hmm. So you could just make your, your life a lot easier if you just... Um, yeah, if you just um, take some open source stuff. Yeah. Okay, we need to build like a big, big wooden door. Um, okay, how do we do this? Okay, this is a good start. Oh god, happens always, all the time to me. I still need some time to get used to 2.8. It's so different. Right, so there is this crazy door right here and some guy. Um, we won't model the guy, but something like that door. Not entirely like that, but something close. So let's make some. Okay, I think I need. Something like that. Uh, I'm sure there's a better way to do this. But yeah, kind of. I actually love to just work with uh, not perfect measures, but more like measuring with your eye because um, I don't know, I think it's not really worth to work with centimeters for just some game. Um, okay, let's extrude this. Let's. Bedwards. Um Dalabot says uh, you've shifted more from the puzzle solving aspect of the game to an FPS. Um and if not, how is it balanced? That's a really good question. <laughs> yeah. Um we Yeah, I mean I think we kind of wanted to add more FPS elements to it because um, it just didn't feel very fun. <laughs> it just there just wasn't enough to do in between puzzles. 
Yeah. And our puzzles aren't especially like complicated or unique or you know, they're not yeah. they're not um we're not they're not the selling point of industrial, you know. Exactly, we're not known for some puzzle game, right? We just some yeah. Don't know. It never was. Even when we were thinking that we were doing a puzzle game, we were actually not really. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, like Steve say, it was always quite basic stuff. Yeah. Which is okay because that's kind of what we wanted, wasn't it? Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's about story right it's about um yeah narrative narrative and st- story atmosphere and a sh- yeah. shooter actually fits to that really good doesn't it yeah yeah i know what you mean when i played it it felt largely like an explorative explorative game with puzzle solving and light fps yeah that's pretty much that's kind of what we gathered from the alphas as well um, yes it was just it was almost a walking simulator <laughs> yes exactly um, exactly which we hated the idea of so we just needed some more button clicks going on <laughs> yeah totally uh but half-life being the main inspiration yeah that was and that's a lot more choice. fast-paced combat yeah yeah, yeah. like the combat in that is literally like running and gunning and just like high energy and it's really arcadey yeah it really is. it's not really obvious that it's arcadey but it totally is you know it totally is it is just especially because you don't have iron sights right this is just one of the main yeah one of the main things yeah. right and because we didn't have that um yeah it was just basically walking between Point A and point yes, B. <laughs> exactly. Right. Linear storytelling is dying out with the introduction of all these open world and battle royale type games. Yeah, it, it is. It's. Uh, I mean, like in the AAA industry, it's pretty much dead. Um, yeah. Um, pretty much doesn't exist anymore. You wonder why, right? It's like. Why? There's still a big market for it, isn't it? But I think it's just because it's not it just as, takes. It's, yeah. It's not like from a business perspective, it's not a good idea because it takes a long time. Yeah. It's got zero replayability. You can't monetize it after release, and it's just like for these big companies, it's just not worth it anymore. Exactly. When it was the cutting edge of games, then it totally was because you just sell volumes and volumes of it. Yes. But um. Yeah, the mainstream games aren't interested. Uh, games companies are not interested. They want, uh, you know, live service sort of idea where they get money every month or yeah, every sub- uh, subscriptions is even better, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's pretty mad. That's really mad, actually. When do you hope I'm releasing the game? Um, we're hoping at the end of the year. Yes, end of the year. That's the goal. That's the goal. Uh, if we but there's a f- yeah. Go on. Uh, just saying, like there is, we could, we would be okay to push it to early two to uh to twenty one. Like this is like the time span, but not anymore. Like this, <laughs> it has to stop. Um, yeah, we can't go anymore. It's just there's a few um, few things happening behind the scenes that might yes dictate when it comes out. Exactly. But... Good evening, Finn. Hello. Hello, Finn. Alex says, "Nice shirt, Dave." <laughs> Thank you, Alex. Thank you a lot. That's a nice shirt. It's one of my favorite ones, actually. It's like really, um, it's really, uh, really soft. It's like uh, flannel. Is that a word? Flannel. Is that a, you know flannel shirts? Is that yeah, word? it's. Um... <laughs> Was that too, too special? 
flannel is like uh, what is it? it well in like Britain it's like what you wash like what you dry the dishes with <laughs> that's a flannel oh, oh no no <laughs> but, that's not what I'm wearing but it's like cotton basically isn't it it is cotton but uh, really, yeah like a really uh, soft one basically I don't know how to say it better um, yeah I think formally flannel is still fabric, but uh, I don't know. Yeah. I just think of uh, washing up. <laughs> I think I think it's a British thing. Yeah, that might be it. Oh, Dalaba was actually saying something before. Oh yeah, I think people like the idea of integration and immersion that comes from open world stuff like GTA. There's just freedom which we're closing from sitting and playing the game. Yeah, that's probably it. People just love to. Explore new shit. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we would like, there's room for open world um, in industry, isn't there? Yeah. But we just don't have the manpower to do it, really. Exactly. I think we could emulate it in the next project. Yeah. Um, especially some of the stuff we're doing at the moment. Um, feels like we could be stepping into the right direction if we wanted to do that. Yeah, totally. Um, what I always love is also like these kind of half open world things, like where you have yeah. some hub world and stuff like that, where you... If, like if you played Metro, yeah, um, exactly. Exodus, that's kind of some sort of middle ground, isn't it? Because you've got, there's like, I don't know how many levels there are in total, but say there's like four levels and they're all kind of different biomes. And they're like open world, and you can kind of choose where you go, but they're not massive. Exactly. Um, and there's a lot of like replay in that one area, and yeah, exactly. it's kind of like each level is sort of like a mini Skyrim, isn't it? Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's like a mini Skyrim. Actually, is a good word for that. Yeah, <laughs> mini Skyrim is good. Um, our um. Our game is so intriguing that we're still talking about flannels. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. It's either a soft cloth you wash your face with or it's a type of shirt. Yeah, so. For me, a flannel is a cloth you use in the shower. <laughs> for me, it's a lift, just, I can't, I can't, it's just for shirts. Like, literally, I can't describe yeah. it differently. What would you call, like, a tea towel? A tea towel? In, yeah. Do you know? I don't know if you have an equivalent. I don't have a fucking clue what it is. Tea towel? <laughs> yeah, so when you dry the dishes, so you've just washed up and then you dry the dishes, Yeah. you use a tea towel or a flannel. Yeah. <laughs> or to something dry, like that. you mean like by hand? Yeah, yeah. Well. A dishcloth? Some equivalent like to in that? In German, it's handtuch, which means hand. <laughs> Um, yeah, what is that? A tooth is basically like a piece of, of, of cloth, yeah. A, a piece of yep. fabric. Yeah, so like hand fabric. No, stupid. You can't, if you try to like, write it, translate it, it might be like dumb, yeah. <laughs> it's a very solid line between dishcloth, tea towel. And <laughs> there is, yeah. <laughs> Dangerously close. Um, are we planning on a new project right now? Is that what you, why you want to wrap industrial by the end of 220? <laughs> Piece of fabric versus tea towel. Cast your votes now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, new project. Um, we have a lot of ideas, but we don't have anything set yet yeah. um, we really told ourselves that after we finish industrial we're just going to do some small project that maybe takes like two or three months or something to do yes. something that's kind of simple and kind of maybe a little bit artsy and yes. Um, yes. not an expensive game not a long game just something just short and sweet something. Yeah. Um, yeah, which would I think would still be good just to um, 
to break up the big projects if we did a big project after. Yes. But uh, at the same time, <laughs> it's really tempting to just do another big project. Yeah, it is. It is really tempting. Especially like if we finish Industria, um, you know, like by the end of the year. Yeah. It's just going to be even more tempting because, uh, uh, I don't know. It's just kind of like proving to ourselves that we've finished a big project. <laughs> Certainly, and it, it would also probably be quite tempting to continue with the Industria IP. Um, yeah. Although it's cool to have it and to be able to always come back to it. That's also really nice. Yep. Um, like to just to do yeah. some nice DLC. We just talked, Stephen. We talked about this today. Yeah. Like to just do some to do like a little DLC for free for the people that played Industria that have it. Yeah. I mean, that could be the solution, couldn't it? Because uh, that would still be quite a small project because we've got all the, the base game yeah, made. Exactly, yeah. We could just make like an hour long DLC sort of thing. That'd be amazing. That'd be amazing, yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't even have to be related to the main plot. It could just could be anything, couldn't it? Yes, it could, could be anything, basically. Um, we already could be, uh, we even thought of an RTS game. <laughs> But that is an oh, epic God. game, so um, yeah, that's not a DLC anymore. <laughs> that would oh, the problem is the like the IP of Industria fits in RTS so well. Like yeah. we kind of just wrote a load of ideas down, and then we were like, okay, we've got to stop because yes. <laughs> this is dangerous. This is really dangerous because we already have like these little buildings. Let me just show them really quickly in Engine Steve, uh, so you might cut out. See you in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> um, just for the RTS thing, we have these distant buildings. Let me search this really quick in our content browser. How is it called? Arc Architecture. Forgot how I named it. Second meshes. Canal Architecture. No. Where was that? Streets building no oh. what did it say Steve what are you looking for just the buildings we use in the canal for the um, for the uh, distant meshes in the canal um, they're in I can find them right now Where are they? They are in... Oh, they're just in the canal roots folder. Oh. They're just mixed in. Probably shouldn't be, but... Okay, wait a sec. Is my canal? Uh, canal... Ah, here we go. So we have these buildings here. It's like for this kind of distance just for like backdrops you know uh they look really low res from the, from the they look like nice old school meshes like this um but you know they're great for backdrops and they really inspired us to to make an rts game basically because from top down they're absolutely fine you know <laughs> and then we were like already beginning to plan out what we could do with this like really quickly building a lot of these industrial buildings and like create systems for that. Um, that's crazy. All right, Steve is back, I think. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, to be honest, like it's quite a big project considering like the amount of members of the team, I think. And also, yeah, it's really too big for us, literally too big. Um, mm -hmm. So that's yeah. That's why we spent so many years on it now. <laughs> yep. Too big. Way too big. Have either of you played Infra? No, actually, but I've seen it on Steam. What is that again? I forgot. I heard this. 
Um, I think it's like a single player, um, something kind of like Soma, I think. I don't know if it is actually horror, but I think it's just like a, um, a puzzle exploration -y type game. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know. If, I don't even know if there's like combat in it or anything. I'm not sure. Is that doesn't that this fear? Similar that fear game? No, that was something else. I think. Um, I'm not sure. Mini chat like IG, but no one seems to know about it. And it sucks. Oh, a puzzle exploration game in Source. Nice. Oh, someone mentioned it. Ah. Yeah, someone mentioned this on, like on Instagram on a comment on one of our posts. He said it was similar to Infra, but this guy was disappointed from Infra. I, I think something was going on then. I, I don't remember. Um, yeah. Yeah. No combat and most horror like section is the bunker level. Bunker. If you hadn't any talent, oh, I would love to help if I had any talent at anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you have some talent, dude. Yeah. Everyone has talent in something. I'm sure about that. Okay. The door looks a bit shit. I wouldn't even say that we had, uh, like a few years ago, I wouldn't even say we had um, talent in game design. <laughs> uh, it's really something you just have to work at and work at and work at. And we're still way far from perfect. Yeah. Absolutely. We make mistakes all the time and. Uh, and I, don't, I'm, I suppose because we, um, because of the scale of the project, we pay for those uh, mistakes. Oh yeah, we do. <laughs> like with optimization and all that kind of stuff. Oh man, that's the the worst payday always. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's terrible, really. And that goes for um, for visual stuff and code stuff. Um, and story. And story, yeah. Everything. Yeah, everything. Yeah, just everything. Yeah, you just gotta do everything right. I used Blender a couple of years ago, but never really got into it properly. Love to get back into it. Well, I really highly suggest you do it. <laughs> this software is amazing. I could just talk about Paris about it. Um, so I better not start. <laughs> um, See, when I, um, yeah. I don't use it uh, anymore, but when I, before me and Dave started working on industry, I was uh, learning Blender and I kind of used it sort of mildly for about a year or so. Yeah. And um, that's right, man. You, you did some Blender stuff too. Yeah. Uh, for the four horsemen actually, I was using Blender for that. Oh, really? And um yeah. Didn't you that? And um I felt like what I did was basically just went on to the Blender documentation and got all the really useful hotkeys, written them all down on paper, stuck them on the wall in front of my screens. Yes. Or behind my screens. Yes. <laughs> and just had like like four pages of cheat sheets. And That's um exactly what I did when I started, literally. Yeah, it's so it's amazing. Like it, it's really bewildering at first, but when you learn the hotkeys, yeah, it's just amazing. It's just so much quicker than any. It's crazy. Yeah, it's damn crazy. Unless you stupid like me and get stuck into some things and think about how to tackle some geometry problem for ages and streaming at the same time and you can't do multitasking. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's complicated. 
Uh, Finn says he's taking notes. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, asks, uh, I might have asked before, but with the programming in this game, is it mainly visual scripting using blueprints or are you working with C++? Um, it's all blueprint. We don't have any programming experience at all. Um, That's great. That's just really crazy, actually. Yeah, you can do so much with blueprints. It's just it's just crazy. It's absolutely amazing, really. Because I mean, I've done a tiny, tiny bit of programming in Java, which is totally different, um, but still the same kind of idea, like same sort of theory. Yeah. Um, but you know, I did like Hello World, which is <laughs> like like the first thing you ever learn in programming. If anyone's a programmer. Um, but I, like, I kind of had an idea of how things worked, but not really a working understanding of. Um, but if you put the time into blueprints, you can you can do some crazy, crazy stuff. Loads of stuff. Blueprints are absolutely, absolutely amazing, just as Blender has. Just... Yeah. I mean, it's... Um, yeah, it's... Uh, industry is just proof of that, isn't it? Because we're powering everything through through blueprints. And you could even do multiplayer stuff in Blueprint as well. Like if, if Industria was uh, had some kind of multiplayer mode, that would still work through Blueprints if we set it up. This is crazy, man. This is really crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of the time, there's not much need to delve into the code. Yeah, pretty much. I was actually considering doing a course uh, in C++, like a year um, course at the local uni when we started the game, but just didn't need it. Yeah, why? So I never, never, never bothered. Yeah, why should you, should you even do that? Yeah. And I think like the sort of games that we're interested in making, they're not technical marvels anyway, so I don't think we're ever going to really need programming. With visual scripting now that's true yeah that's really true yeah we don't rely on like heavily custom stuff it's like all yeah yeah as long as epic keep giving us software yeah we're good <laughs> yes if they stop we have a problem <laughs> is there a big difference in what you can do um been doing C++ for about a year as a hobby, just from YouTube and books. Yeah, there's, um, I mean, we you can't change fundamental things like how the light rendering works or um, there's a few instances where we've hit walls with blueprints um, yeah. and there's a few scenarios where, uh, like for example, the other day we were looking at um, some UI stuff and I was trying to figure out a way of separating a string um, and changing changing the color of parts of the string, but you can't actually do it in blueprints, um, which is really bizarre. Like you can't expose variables inside a string. You have to kind of construct it in blueprints. I still don't even know what a string is, by the way. Um, <laughs> it's, it's just a data type. Literally a string is just... Um, a string of characters, so like text, basically. But text and string are different because text can be translated, whereas a string is just a string. You know, it's just what it is. Right. Okay. But text can have like grammatical translation and all that kind of stuff. Okay. 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 Crazy. Uh, yeah, that's, I, mean, I guess that's basic shit, and I still don't understand that now. At some point, I want to really actually learn this shit, dude. I want to learn this. Yeah, I keep thinking that. Like, I, I keep thinking I'd love to just sit down with you and have you tell me how to use Blender again, dude. <laughs> and um, we learn should, stuff. But we should totally do this when we when we're done with this shit here. Which would be really great, but I don't know if it's a waste of time. In not that it's a waste of time, but if you know what I mean, like. I know what you mean. I don't know if it's worth just getting a project done in that time. 
Yeah, well, it, yeah. Could, it could always be just uh, like as a separate thing going on next to the project, you know? Like yeah. Some, like an hour per week, that'd be great, wouldn't it? Like just showing each other how stuff works. Then I guess in some instances, our general workflow would improve because I would understand better what you what the hell you're doing <laughs> yeah. with the blueprints. Uh, in some instances, I wouldn't have to ask you every time the same shit because I know how it works, basically. Or how the, yeah, the basic stuff behind it works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's cute, isn't it? Okay, how do I do this? Let's submit it. I don't know what you guys are talking about even. <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, this is where our uh, technical knowledge ends. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fine, right? It has to end somewhere. <laughs> yeah. It is frustrating though. I'd love to just know it all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not going to happen, obviously. But... These buildings are a lot of work, I can tell you that. But they need to be there. There's no way around it. If you're um, just watching YouTube uh, tutorials for C++ as well, if they're anything like the blue, uh, blueprint ones that I've seen in the past, I would uh, be careful <laughs> because some of them are just really bad and some of them give you like really bad um, uh, habits to get into, you know, and so, yeah. yeah. Even approved by an epic diff we talked to. Yeah. He said the same, right? Yep. And it goes, I, I bet Dave, you even see modeling um, videos where you're like, what the heck is yeah. this guy doing? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah, man. This, this... Well, that's the that's the that's the scary thing about tutorials, right? You never know if you're starting out. Mm -hmm. what, like you don't have any. It is just it's just a really hard learning curve, like because you, you yeah. probably learn a lot of stuff that is actually not the right way to do it. And I I did I I, you know, I did the tutorial yeah. as well, and probably I was teaching some stuff in the tutorial that is not industry standard and not perfect. Um, yeah, which is okay because, I mean, you're basically you're, you're just trying to get a result, aren't you? And if the result works, that's fine. But sometimes, yeah, it can cause big issues. Yes, totally. Yes, it can really cause big issue. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have to, but. Okay. Adala Butt says the topology is looking clean. Really oh, good job. Thank you. Um, it's like really weird because when I'm streaming, I'm I'm so damn slow. Like normally I don't think about that much because, but now I'm I know some people are watching and, <laughs> yeah. and I gotta be, I gotta uh, I 
I don't have to. F- I kind of fuck this up now. <laughs> it's just a psychological thing. So I'm doing a lot of this looking around like this and like three times just rotating the mesh <laughs> and just looking at it again. Yeah. I don't know why. Normally I'm just like just doing it. But hey, um, at least we're making some progress here. <laughs> Thanks, Dalla. Okay, I think it's time for the windows now. There's no way around it. Um, okay, how do we do this? Let's first move this thing to the middle. And let's have a scene right here. Put that on there. And scene there's actually no scene there that's interesting let's look at this um okay okay six windows showing you the image again i think what i'm gonna do is so that's one patch and another cut here we have a cut here, we make a basic cut here, and some basic cut here. And then another cut there for these big things to be extruded. And then later we need cuts for these pillars like that. Will be a lot of cuts. This is the point where it gets really messy and where you have to optimize later uh, because there's a lot of unused polygons everywhere. But I think that's just how we're going to do it anyway. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Yeah, definitely, man. Uh, like with more, especially with more um, experience in streaming. Like, I was doing these uh, one minute modeling time lapses on um, on Instagram, but these are actually these are actually you know they're just one minute and they're just really fast and just time lapse and you don't see the slow movement, you know, um, yeah, it's just a bit different. Thank you, man. Uh, thanks a lot. They were actually a lot of fun to make and a lot of people really seem to like them. Yeah. Yeah, but what thing? What roadblock do you mean? Okay, first I've done that there. Let's just make that left and right first. So in the reference, they do the windows due to the far right point here. want to do really I think oh Steve's dead Am I still alive? Hello? 
Hello. Uh, Discord is dead, isn't it? Yeah, I think servers have gone down. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I suppose it'll be obscene, but. That's crazy. Yeah, I see this. The thing is just. Industrial server went down as well, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Discord servers went down. Oh. <laughs> Same for you. <laughs> Rip. Yes. But he's back. <laughs> Uh, Steve, yeah. Can you can you activate like uh, voice activation? Is that possible? Like on uh, Skype, it's automatically turned off. I think. All right. Okay. I, I haven't found a way to turn on yet. Yeah, it dies a lot, but there's a lot of users, right? It's lost a lot of users too. I don't know if you can do that in Skype, actually. But you used to be able to do that. Right. Oh god. Okay. Okay, let's make another cut. One here. Okay, we can try something. Two separate windows here. And then we want to try this. That's actually quite a nice way. Just beveling. But then. Yeah, is that the right width? Kind of is. I think it is. And then we do a double window thing in the middle. How do we approach that? Probably just by eye measuring. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. That's totally working out. Just the double windows that should be above the door. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay, that's good. So now, we have these defined. And I think now I'm just gonna how do we do this? So oh, shit. Yeah, before I do that, I gotta define the, the pillars as well. So we're gonna do this, this, this. Oh. Let's move the green lights again. Okay, this, 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 and then make them as thick as the pillars are. I'm talking about actually these pillars right here. I mean, in theory, this I think I'm gonna make it a bit more simple than it is right here, just for the sake of poorly count. But like, I do a simple pillar, and then I'm just gonna intrude, uh, uh, extrude inwards with a few steps. But we don't have it, so we don't have any like vertical cuts going up. That seems to be right. Okay, so now what we can do is basically grab the whole thing. But I think what I'm going to do first though is actually add a cut there now. Doesn't matter. Oh, does matter. Okay. 
really not easy, these buildings turning again. Just insane slow when modeling them. Wait. Oh boy, I think I made a mistake. Shit. I made a mistake. Fuck. What'd you do? Oh no, it's all good. Sorry. I can't see an option to push to talk in Skype. It's okay, man. Uh, it's all I right. hope it's not too feedbacky, sorry. No, no, it's not. It's just some slight background, but I think it's okay. Um, oops. Like that. Like that. Oh god. This is getting messy. Like that, no. Okay, you hear me saying a lot of oh god now. Because this is really but hey, it will be worth it, I'll tell you that. Okay, now we're going to do this. This is what we want. This and 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 this. Yes, this is what I wanted. Okay, now we're talking. bit and now again fuck this is literally the worst part of the whole modeling process right here figuring out all the up and downs and up and downs So yeah, I would actually love to see a live stream where someone is doing this. <laughs> uh, doing what, sorry? Just modeling a building like that and just see how he's tackling this yep. situation. Because I'm just doing this like how I think it should be done. What about the... Uh... But God knows if this is right. Um, do you remember that guy we were watching live stream a while ago? Um, oh, yeah, yeah. On that site that was trying to... I don't know if it's site... Is that site still going? What was it? Watch Me Work or something? Uh, I don't have a clue. Yeah, watchmework.com. Watch me it's kind of kind of like um, Twitch for people that are doing work basically <laughs> yeah, yeah. but I don't know if it doesn't look like it's taken off really actually I don't have a clue the um, I mean it's a weird concept if you think about it that you watch someone working yeah but I guess it really depends on the work I mean if you just imagine it looks watch someone who's like filling out some insurance papers or something <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, that'd well, that's, be, uh, that'd be really mad. That would potentially be a legal issue as well. <laughs> yeah, probably. But, um, I can't. Um, I mean, even in what we're doing, I wouldn't be able to do it. I like, I wouldn't physically be able to concentrate whilst talking to people. Um, yeah. yeah. Just 
if it was something menial like just some level asset placement, you know? Yeah. Some making a little scene a bit prettier, that would be alright. Yes. But if we were developing, I wouldn't be able to. <laughs> just yeah. wouldn't be able to focus on it. Are you with the blueprints or something? Yeah, like I wouldn't, if I was doing blueprints, I just wouldn't be able to focus. I don't think it's really worth it, though, because uh, Cause what? Um, I yeah. would just make mistakes. Don't if I was yourself down, dude. No, but I mean, like, if I was focusing on... Bloody British, mm. just... <laughs> yeah, no, sceptical bastards. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> but if I was, like, trying to script something yeah. whilst... Um, Hosting a stream, yeah, I, I just wouldn't be able to do it because I'd just make mistakes or I'd just make really stupid blunders where it wouldn't work and <laughs> just, just doesn't work. Oh, I'm yeah. sure some people would be able to do it, but I wouldn't. Well, that's what you say. Uh, oh yeah, Cromfell says uh, you could you could probably stream if you're just placing more pots. <laughs> that's that's probably true. I think that'll be true. I agree. Dave's already proved that, actually. I, I proved that, and <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I'm something like the official uh, pot placer. I think that's the, the correct name for it, the legal <laughs> name for it. We're actually uh, promoting for a pot placer as well. Yes. Uh, if anyone knows anyone with some professional experience? I don't. There's no no one. <laughs> um, I doubt there. I doubt there's anyone, but um, yeah. Well, they gotta have minimum of like two years pot placing experience yes. and one one shipped pot placement. Yes. So. So yeah, but it's it's hard to get to this level. You know, it's, it's just really few people actually been able to do this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a lot of science behind it. It is. It is. There is complete um, universities focusing on pot placement. I, I never went to university for that. I was sort of self teaching all this. <laughs> well, I'm I'm happy. Um, I'm happy about that. About that crumb. Let's leave it on that and push it in here and bam that's some nice windows isn't it yeah okay okay so that's the lower windows kind of done not really done kind of done um question dave have you ever played around with the Render in Blender. The render? Yeah. Oh, you mean Eevee? I don't know, there's a few of them, isn't there? Oh, you there mean used like to be the, a few. The, the rendering features on there. Oh, you mean the, yeah. Uh, yeah, of course, of course, of course, of course, of course. Of course. Um, a lot when I started, actually. Back mm -hmm. then, I was playing a lot with this. And the, the Eevee thing is just crazy, man. Yeah. Yes. And what is that exactly? Well, it's basically um, real. It's basically like Unreal. It's using right. a PBR shader, and uh -huh. so we can basically plug in our assets in there, and they just look really good. Do they? So would they look similar to what you could expect in Unreal? Yeah. Really similar. Cool. Um, I can actually just activate EV right here. And create some material for it here, and then we just have brightness and all that shit. What are we rendering? Render it. Material preview. Uh, space color. Yeah. So yeah, that is, it's looking really good. 
Yep. Um, not so much because this is just some straight surface right here. Mm -hmm. But for example, the, this dude here, if we give this guy some roughness, you know, it's basically like a PBR shader. You just have all the normal inputs you would know. Yeah. So, I mean, look at this shit. And this is all. Uh huh. Ooh. Um, yeah, that's just the, the basic material setups you can do here. There's also yep. real time volumes, real, real time, yeah, volume scatters. Uh, like a real time hair shader. Oh, is metallic a metallic map there? Is that a range from zero to one? Yeah. Is there any instance where you'd use in between zero and one? Not really. Um, but yeah, maybe for some strange material, like some alien thing, like some for some sci fi game, maybe. Yeah. So you can do it, but I would not really suggest it because it always looks a bit weird. It's strange, yeah. It's not, it just doesn't look right. Yeah. Well, even with basically real-time render engine using symmetrix is common game. Yeah, it's just using the PBR workflow, basically. Um, But yeah, not intended for games, it's intended for previous for the Psychos render. So you can basically work in real time and it kind of looks a bit like the render you're going to do afterwards with Psychos. So the idea is that you just, um, the idea is that you can switch directly from Blender, like from the, from the EV, from the real time thing to Psychos and you would just take all the shaders as you put them in real time and just take them for the cycles render engine so you can nice. just switch between a really good preview to the final render and you don't have to do this rendering and it's looking if it's good and it's back and forth it's all one thing which is completely unique in this in the cg world from what i know which is pretty bonkers yeah the performance is comparatively Cool. it's unreal of course yeah but i'd love to see the blender game engine to be um improved and that they could heavily um they could heavily uh what's the word profit from ev i mean they basically have a real-time shader system there it could just be improved for games and they could just basically base the render, the re the render engine, the Blender render engine on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, that's true. Chrome. Oh uh, no, that's Mental Man now. Oh, this is similar. Discord is still dead. <laughs> Discord is still dead. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> I do not. I do tend to use EV to produce final renders. It's decent enough to work well for tunage renders. I agree. I actually did some uh, video animation with with the uh, EV, and it was it looked great. It looked basically like cycles, or uh, well, like some Unreal Engine in in-game cinematic. So that was. Uh, That's amazing, actually. That and it, it rendered really quick. Like every frame was basically rendered in like a second, instead of like fifteen seconds or in a minute. Depends on your resolution and cycles. So you could do animations really, really, really quick. I just did this for um, little art thing. Yeah, the video I'm showing right now. <laughs> Dang, there's a lot of sand going up. Let me remove this. Let me zoom in here. Can we zoom? Yes, we can zoom. This video that you see right here was actually rendered in um, um, oops, 
Oh, sorry, should we start it? Uh, this video was actually um, rendered in Eevee. And I think it looks great. Ah. Yeah, it does. Like, the reflections to the right here are totally fine. Um, it's basically using screen space reflections as well. And you can do a lot with the with the sh with the shadows, like how smooth they are, how sharp they are, mm -hmm. um, and with the occlusion, all the post processing you know from game engines exist. It's great, man. I mean, that could easily pass as Unreal, good enough. Totally, totally. And I've literally used assets from our game for this. <laughs> yeah. The window here in the background, the bird itself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Everything. that's gotten this. Yeah, um, it's bird, exactly. Like all the oh yeah, actually everything here is from our game. All the furniture here, it's all assets, for, like, texture as well on the floor. Even all the textures on the walls, it's all <laughs> assets from um, from industrial actually. To the right, these the furniture to the right here looks totally great. So uh, this much to um, to Eevee, powerful tool, really powerful tool actually. <laughs> Bird <Burp forever>. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. So how you doing guys, are you still awake? Because we're streaming two hours soon. Oh man, I've got to make my dinner. You haven't, <laughs> you haven't had dinner yet? No, kind of missed the slot really well. Yeah, same. Oh well. I think I'm just gonna add these upper windows and then we might actually call it a day. Um, yeah, I think I'm just gonna add the windows up here. They are actually huge, huge windows. Something like that. But I do want to have them in this frames again. But not as thick. Yeah. Ian Hubert. Wonderful guy. Um, Ian is a great guy, man. Uh, he, uh, I actually, it's funny. I met him on on the Blender conference in Amsterdam. I was on like the last one, it was uh, somewhere in, in autumn, two thousand nineteen, and we had some really good talks there. That was great, and well, his work is just amazing. He's really into this Blender render stuff, and I'm really not into it anymore because I'm doing games, but I'd love to actually be more into this as well. Because it's, so, it's just so good. Like just rendering little movies and doing little CGI shots. Uh, I just love to be in there a bit more involved. Looks great, man. Yeah. That, um, that Dynamo Dream yeah. teaser. It's crazy. How did they... Um... How did he fit the the recording of the character in there? Let me see. Dynamo Dream. Let me see. I mean, I don't know the first thing about oh, video that's, editing. That's his girlfriend, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's basically just tracking in green screen. So yeah. he recorded her on, on green screen and then tracked it in there. And put and put some three D windows on top of it. Mm -hmm. Blender has a really good tracker, actually. Yeah. Blender's motion tracker, like yeah, the tracker is actually one of, of the one really good one. Uh, a lot of people use it for CGI and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's a really green screen on a plane. Got you. 
crazy shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's so cool. It's like to good. think that um to think you can make stuff like that. Um without these I mean I don't know how many people worked on this but I think he basically did it alone, like the modeling all. Um he uh, yeah. of course his girlfriend helped him with the with the recordings thing. Yeah. Um but then think... also some other people helped him with the green screen recordings, I think. I mean imagine considering trying to make something like this like twenty years ago. It's just like yeah. never gonna happen, is it? I mean you'd need a big team Yes. A <laughs> huge team of uh professional filmmakers <laughs> to do something like this. Absolutely, man. Pretty crazy. Yeah, it certainly is. He had a plane with the video in the scene. Yeah, it's amazing. Ah, yeah. And it cast shadows. That's crazy. So, so I guess like it's basically like an alpha map around the character, and then the translucent, or no, the opaque pixels cast a softened shadow or something. It's mental. That's what I never really got how it works, but it works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that must be doing some crazy wizardry though because obviously if it's like I mean the character there is just like you said 2D on a plane with opacity yeah. but it's casting like you know you need a 3D object to cast that shadow so <laughs> well <laughs> yeah totally I'm sure Krong can tell you something about it yeah he's really into this shit I think and Mr. Mental Man as well I guess Looks like we have some CG geeks in the stream. Yeah. I really don't have much clue about it. I did some tracking. Oh, God. Uh, I did some tracking when I was a bit younger <laughs> with our composer. Um, oh, God. I've got something up here. Trace the shadow, including the transparency of the plane. Yeah. That's kind of what I assumed, but if you see what I mean, like the the character's shadow projection needs to be cast from a 3D object, not like the 2D outline of her character, if you know what I mean. Right. I don't know if that makes sense, but it makes sense in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Looks great anyway. It's really cool. <clears throat> um, I'm trying to find a video. Is that? Oh yeah, there we go. So, um, I just post something in the stream. Um, yeah. This is <laughs> actually <laughs> me and a friend. Yeah, it's Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> How long ago is this? Seven years. That's a long time ago. I wish you could fun with this. It's total stupid. Um, but it's, this is like, I mean, you could probably have to understand German to make it full funny, but, um, yeah, it's supposed this cringy to be this cringy software review of two, just two absolute idiots <laughs> and just wait for the end. I love, uh, your first scene, Dave. Uh. 
just wait for the end you'll see my like our wonderful cg skills there <laughs> blender and after effects <laughs> so good <laughs> That's great, man. I think you've shown me that before. Oh, I see, yeah. <laughs> it's brutal, isn't it? Should have said it contains graphic imagery. Yeah, it should have warned us, man. Yeah. We have to up our. Um, target audience on um, yeah. the stream. Schwach. Yeah, that's what that's it. The oh, Discord's back. Oh, Discord is back. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yes, exactly, mental man. That's what you get for asking for likes. Just get killed immediately. <laughs> I I hope you heard it. Um, my buddy was actually stepping on the ass of gun. I just love this sort of humor. <laughs> yeah, it's loud. I think we re record the cracking extra with with a microphone to make it like more brutal. And lay yeah. on top. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's all these cringy airsoft reviews out there. It's crazy, man. Yeah, I know. It's I was, uh. Terrible. Yeah, I was, uh. <laughs> one of the viewers of that cringy. Yeah. Um. Community? <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> yeah. Back in the days. Yeah, I used to. Um, cool. I know, man. I used to. There was um a little market hall, uh, in Newtown where I lived, and yeah. um, there was a little store there that sold like about two or three little airsoft guns, and they were crap. They were like cheap, like ten, fifteen quid or something like that. Yeah. Cheap, naff stuff, but you could. Um, they were spring operated, Ooh, so you could take them apart, stretch the spring, or put a better spring in it and they'd be like <laughs> lethal <laughs> um, oh, or you could like you could put pennies behind the springs as well pennies to behind press the springs it yeah so if you imagine like um, the yeah. spring's length was like 10 centimeters or something yeah and you put pennies behind the stopper yeah. um, to like shorten the spring then there's kind of more tension in it yeah 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 of course dude I remember we did the same shit <laughs> I remember uh, the first time I got um, a BB gun with um, hop up. Yeah, of course, hop up the hop up system. Yeah, like spins the ball bearing, doesn't it? Yes, exactly. <laughs> so it goes, it goes further, right? Yeah, and then I remember getting, I got a Beretta, like an M9 Beretta with hop up and yeah. heavyweight BBs, Dude. and that thing used to shoot so straight, man. I was just like. I'm never going back to anything else. <laughs> <laughs> to anything else. Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, can relate. I was actually playing in an airsoft team. 
Um, I would have loved that. Like, we had a few people... No, it was like some kind of professional thing. Like, we were going to some thing where you could officially mm. play, like, legally. Yeah. There was, like, a, a place for that. And that was yeah. all great. That was really cool, man. Um, it was so much fun, actually. Yeah, I would love that. We used to just, like, get... Oh, the Elia way, I know. We did the same. Yeah, there was, like, this old building site. Yeah, uh, it's always the same. It's always the uh, fucking kids. Going to old building sites. Fucking about in the derelict buildings. Yeah. And then the police gets involved and uh, yeah, the exactly. parents get called and yeah. shit, man. <laughs> yeah. That's always the same. It's always the same. Actually, we got invited by some other team to their own private space where we could play airsoft. <laughs> nice. And uh, it was all great. It was fun. It was somewhere in the forest near Berlin. Um, was it actually on their land? Well, that's where the story <laughs> starts. <laughs> All right. Um, because, uh, no, it wasn't. Uh, we didn't knew it. They told us it was their land, but it wasn't. They were. They told us, oh, well, it's all made the police and the, the, um, mm-hmm. the authorities. All, it's all good, right? And we played with them. We had a great day. And sometimes there was like some bicyclists, like cyclists coming, uh, like driving through the through the uh, through the land and saying hello, um, like so asking for some way to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, saying why? Why is there some cycle guy just on their private property? We were like a bit annoyed by that, and then like saying, well, he probably just didn't saw like the the, the signs and shit. And yeah. then we just played on, and then later the day when we finished, we were going back to the train to the through the forest yeah um well <laughs> uh, they were waiting but there was there was vehicles coming from behind and we like we let them pass through we, we thought it was just some was well, just some vehicles and we just let them pass through but then they two of them were good, passing us the other two were staying behind it was just some long path you know there was just forest left and right uh-huh. And well, then the third the, the the vehicle stopped in front of us, and there was like policemen coming out with dogs, and <laughs> dude, we were scared like shit. That was, this was one of the worst moments in my life, I think. Yeah. Well, these guys weren't that happy, um, because they were actually searching for um, right wing. Uh, extremi- extremis, extremi- extre- oh, know. right. How you call so it? they weren't messing they were around looking for neo-Nazis. Yeah. 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 They were looking for neo Nazis and wanted Did to. Did they think you and your friends were them? Yes. <laughs> Shit, man. <laughs> so, so they were not pissing about. They were, well, the thing is, they weren't, they were, I think they were, that was, that was the reason why we were there. They were actually observing this whole area the whole day. And the cyclist was actually the fucking chief of the police who was like in oh who had actually was right. observing us and yeah and he also showed up then later when they fucked us when they um when they and how old were you us. and your friends 17 16 right. uh, it's pretty hilarious though isn't it when like it's pretty hilarious when like <laughs> the local police force think you're terrorists because you're just some kids pissing about with bb guns <laughs> that was the, that was the really uh that really the really um yeah the really uh sad part of the story because the poor policemen yeah. they waited for these uh right-wing neo-nazi guys yeah and then these fucking kids came about <laughs> fucking plastic guns yeah and they had to stay there and like actually ask for all the paperwork and because we were playing there and it was public area it was not it was just a lie there was no public no private property there so Mm -hmm. we're essentially handling with trespass yeah well we were actually handling with them with with things that look like weapons in public area and that was illegal yeah so they had to actually completely bust us and they did Did they seize the bb guns they seized them all and they were all burned. Wow. They were all melted. Yeah. My brother's friend um, had something kind of similar happen because yeah. he was stupid enough. Like, he bought like this AK 
47 um, <laughs> fully automatic electric BB gun. Yeah. And um, he was stupid enough to be walking around town with it in camos. Oh, God. <laughs> so, can you and do it's only. That? No. <laughs> Short answer, no. And it's only like a small town, but even so, you know, People armed police trained. came out of this van, told him to get down on the floor, drop his gun. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like. Bonkers, man. Fucking dangerous as well. Like, yep. You easily get shot by the police there. And I can't yeah, really. They won't piss about. They won't piss about. And I, I understand <laughs> that. I mean, if if I'm if I'm a policeman and there's just people with guns, you don't, they just look so damn real. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, most of them are replicas, aren't they? So. Yeah. They even feel real in your hands. So. Yeah. Um, so damn dangerous. Is my posted his main character on Discord? Yeah, it looks great, man. It looks really good. Let me look at that. What's the game? Oh, new people joined the server. Abysma joined. Ah. Abysma posted. Oh, this is Cybershock. Yeah, I got you. Ooh, damn. That looks ambitious, dude. Do you have a uh, a website link or something? You need to f set up some social medias, dude. Oh, it's a her. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, sorry. It was Dave. Little Dave. <laughs> I'm very sorry. It's so rare that you see actually female people. It's just like you're always thinking that it's, mm. it's just always saying in the first second anyway. That's a nice spin. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, the Discord, yeah. Right. You should set up a Twitter account. I tell you this. Mm -hmm. Twitter is the it's best pretty good. way to just get the word going in the scene and for press and all that stuff. So, I mean, it's... I guess it's probably quite hard to start out there when you have nothing to show yet. But if you have something to show, um, posting beautiful screenshots and using the screenshot Saturday hashtag is really worth it. So I, I can really mm -hmm. suggest that. We started with this a bit too late. We were always doing Instagram only and yeah. that's all cool. But <coughs> well, the professionals are on Twitter. Yes, basically. exactly. Professionals are on Twitter. And the most valuable thing you can do is put time into it because it yes. just takes so long. It's like, a, yep. it's just a pain. <laughs> it's, it a, it's a big job in itself. It absolutely is. That's the reason for all these community managers and social media uh, things. Um, I'm going to have to shoot soon, Dave. Yeah, that's um, cool. Um, I'm actually... Um, I want to finish up this here in a second. Okay. Here. And just put this into Unreal for a second now to just so we can actually see what we did here today. Still not very sure about the architecture of buildings in my game. You are preaching to the choir, man. <laughs> we are in the same boat. Um, we are. Which is why we're doing the buildings tonight on the stream, because... Uh, We've had to do some redesign and stuff lately. Oh yes, we did. There's going to be buildings that retract into a stronghold underground. That sounds crazy. Crazy cool. Um, how are you doing that with like animated skeletons or? Sounds cool. Um, the one thing you want to be careful of, uh, if you're going to use like skeletal meshes, is um, the lighting. Especially if they're going to be big objects like buildings, you're basically going to have to like dynamically light them. Um, 
which might not be a problem. It depends on the project, I suppose. But if we tried to do it in Industria, yeah. and had like all the streets dynamically lit, then um, the game wouldn't run. Yeah. <laughs> not very that's, well, anyway. That's And we also, um, we tried to, like, if we've got some moving animated thing, then we try to make as much of it static as we can so we can have it lit properly. Yes. Static lighting in Unreal is just superb, isn't it? Yeah. It's so good. But that's, um, it's funny, because in... Maybe like five years time, that's not even going to be an issue because everything's going to be ray traced. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Light maps are just going to be dead, man. Such actually. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> I think like in ten years, people are just going to like we're going to look back and think of light maps and just be like, God, that's such a mental solution. It's, it's just so crazy. crazy. It's crazy, like literally crazy. Like whoever came on had this idea, he's crazy. So silly to do it actually like that, but <laughs> we don't another way. Yeah. I mean, it's um, yeah, it's it's all, it's all relative, though, isn't it? Like that would be crazy when ray tracing's the norm, because yeah. it's just so stupid. But obviously, in the current climate, it's um, pretty yeah. damn useful. Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys, I'm actually just gonna um, import this really quickly into Unreal. Catch you later, Finn. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, thanks, Finn. We're actually going to finish this stream in a second as well. Ciao, Finn. See you next time. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to export this uh, model right here into Unreal really quickly. Just as it is. It's not finished. There's still a lot of work in this. Um, but just to actually see something happening in Unreal at least today. So I'm just going to do some smart unwrap so there's something going on and export thing as FBX, <coughs> apply all transforms, export FBX, FBX apartments rich to static export. Now I'm just going to jump into Unreal, Steve is probably going to cut off. So. Um, yeah. Or maybe not. Maybe not with Skype. We don't know. Uh, yeah. Exciting times. We'll find out. <laughs> well, I'm already in Unreal, so it sounds good so far. Oh, it's way better, yeah. Okay, so this is... I'm just bringing in the model as it is currently in the engine. Really simple, really ugly. But does it drop? And all right, let's see the difference, shall we? Re-import it. Now we're talking. I think it was worth the hustle. Now that's way, way better. I mean, nice. I still want to add a lot of um, bevels and little detail details make it all a bit less straight like a bit more like at quite loop cuts quite some lucas everywhere and uh make to make everything just less straight that helps a lot that helped on these buildings a lot like you can see right here oops i did some like these lines are all not completely straight they're like pushed up and pushed down a bit Pushed up here, pushed inside, pushed outside, just to make everything just to look a bit more organic. Uh -huh. um, that's what we're going to do with this building as well. But this is a great, um, some great progress here. A bit slow because of the stream, of course. But hey. I'm happy. Uh, I'm really happy if you had some good evening with us. And we made also some progress. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the Blender 2 Unreal add-on will be actually overkill. Awesome. 
or something. Basically like a life link from Blim to Unreal. Oh really, nice. Yeah. Epic is doing it's... that actually. Yeah, they um they put a load of money into Blender, didn't they? Yeah they did. Is that something you're gonna be um adopting, Dave? Maybe, but I'm not sure if it's really worth it for this project anymore. Not sure if changing workflows is a good idea, but I actually thought the same about Blender 2.8 and I switched and it's still great. Um, I managed to do it, so probably gonna manage to do this as well. Yeah. Hmm. I've got a... Yeah, we're gonna shoot. Um, I wish everyone a wonderful evening. We're going to say goodbye and see you next time, actually. Yep, that was cool. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Yeah, thanks a lot for joining. Um, oh, Steve, you might actually head off because I still want to uh, do this thing about the Steam page. Yeah, I'm just going to stick around after the stream for a sec. Okay. Well, um, then I'm just going to ask you guys for some help. <laughs> Um, before we leave, um, I just show you something. Uh, I just dropped in the chat the link to our store page for Industria, and I showed this last time to a few people. I don't know to the people that were watching last time; they already know how it works. But essentially, um, Steam works with tags, right? So this is the Steam page of Industria and these tags here are really important because these are basically like hashtags for the game. So people find games through these tags basically. And to make, for example, Industria popular in one of these tags, people have to vote for them, have to vote for the tags. So if you're on the Steam page right now and just click on that plus here, and you then see, um, I don't know, sorry, let me just go to my locked in Steam. Wait a sec. Uh, if you're locked in, because if you're not locked in, you don't see it properly. All right. Um, so you can know, it's on German, it doesn't matter. Right here on that plus thing, if you go there, you see all these tags and it would be amazing if you guys could um, make a tick behind these tags, behind indie, action, adventure, steampunk, FPS, atmospheric, single player and female protagonist, for example. So if you just wanna make one tick, just for example, on female protagonist. And what it does is it, it's voting up um, Industria into the Steam algorithm. It helps us a lot with uh, promoting the game. Um, so yeah, what I'm probably gonna do is on Discord, I'm gonna create like a little channel. Uh, I'm gonna probably call this like, like support channel or like we need your help channel. And then we could um, frequently, because these tags always change so if half of alex now comes out the um for example the the fps tag goes like really popular in steam and if we are also popular in the hashtag we have a big chance to get more people um uh seeing the store page and wishlisting the game which is gonna increase like to possibly that the game gets shown to more people so it directly supports us a lot when you um, vote for some hashtags uh, for some tags ideally the most upvoted tags so it gets even higher in these tags so for example female protagonist would be something i would ask you to um to to um, vote for now if you want to do it uh, we would be really happy about it and that was actually it um so uh yeah Thanks a lot again. Um, thanks for stopping by and 
Yeah. Uh, I wish a wonderful evening. Yeah, thank you guys. That was good. And we'll be streaming again. Oh yeah. Don't know. In, um... I want to. I want to still do weekly streams. That'd be amazing. That'd be good. I mean, what's a shorter stream? It's just like. Um, yeah, just an hour or something. That'd be nice too. Yeah, that'd be nice. Uh, maybe the next stream we can show some in-game stuff as well. Yeah, that'd be nice. That'd probably be good. We've actually got a lot of new stuff in the game oh, that yeah. we could probably show off. So it seems to work with Skype now. <laughs> yeah, Skype seems to be good. Yeah. Cool. Cool, alrighty. Uh, enjoy evenings and see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.